supported by Glasswire. Hey, what's up everyone? Welcome back to the channel and today we're taking a look at a piece of software that I've been looking forward to for quite some time and that is Remote System Monitor. Now, as the name kind of suggests, you can remotely monitor your system, although you can do that through your smartphone and it is absolutely awesome. Now for me, I run Task Manager, Hardware Monitor, MSI Afterburner or a combination of all of them at any given time up on my screen and it does suck up a fair bit of screen real estate especially if you've only got one screen or maybe you've only got two smaller screens, having screen real estate taken up by those monitors isn't so crash hot. So moving it to your mobile phone, whether it be your existing one or maybe you've got an old one kicking around can be absolutely awesome. So without further ado, let's jump over to the PC, get things set up and see just how it works. Okay, okay, so we've jumped over here to the desktop PC and uh, we've just gone through the installation files, which is pretty much click on the installer, run through it. Yeah, you, if you've installed any software, you know what's going on here. So basically what we've gone ahead and done, I've also to install the app on my phone. You just grab it from the Google Play Store and uh, we're gonna use that to go ahead and um, have a bit of a play around with this software. Now, um, to configure it, it's pretty much not that difficult. Um, you just set a password that you want. For this particular video, I just set one one, two, three, four, because let's face it, we're not really gonna put anything too secure here yet. And um, you basically hit start. Now you can do things like adding a maximum connection counts for a little bit more security so you know that you're the only one connecting to this kind of thing. You can add certificates if you really want to. You can look at error reporting, send them off in emails and that kind of stuff. But let's face it, this is a nice simple little setup that we can monitor our phones or rather monitor our computers from our phones, which is something that I've really been uh, looking forward to and uh, happy that we found it. So for me, server is running. Uh, this particular desktop PC is just my editing computer. This is on my standard home network and this phone is also too on my home Wi-Fi. So nothing uh, special set up here. This is on Wi-Fi, the other computer's on LAN. We can see it right here. It'll automatically pop up as soon as the service is running uh, on your um, computer. So I can basically tap on that one. It will start to join, ask me for the password. I'll enter my super secure password that I went ahead and put in before. Uh, no, we don't want that last pass. It'll take a few moments to go ahead and connect. Obviously, it needs to do its little handshake and stuff like that. Now, you can theoretically port forward this over the internet and run it from an external connections, but security and those kind of things, yes, it's really only monitoring your system, but um, personally, I'm not going to be doing that anytime soon. And as we can see right here, boom, we're in. Um, Basically, we'll just do a quick little run through. It's really self-explanatory. It's just a ton of information about your computer. We'll uh, load things up in just a moment and show you guys how it works as well. But um, some of the most interesting things that do grab my attention, obviously it grabs uh, what system you are running. Um, unfortunately, from my understanding, it is Windows only. So for Mac users, um, well, you probably wouldn't be looking at any of this, but anyway, my point being, um, it is really sort of for Windows. So that's kind of interesting there. Uh, really interesting is the CPU. So obviously we can see here, I've got the uh, 5820K, quite an older chip at this point in time, but still working nevertheless. And it reports accurately things like temperatures. Um, if you've got a newer supported CPU, it'll also do um, per core kind of uh, wattages. You can see here, I have a CPU package because um, that's sort of really, uh, that's all that's reported with this generation from my understanding. Um, and then another really important thing for me is obviously there's memory there, but you also do get your video card. So I've got a GTX 1080 Ti in this thing. Uh, we get temperatures, we get core clocks, we get memory clocks, we get utilization, we get fan control if your particular setup does support it. We get an FPS counter, which uh, isn't running now because there's like nothing running in terms of a game on my system. So the GPU and the CPU monitoring is absolutely on point. We even get a GPU package wattage if your GPU supports it. Again, it all comes down to what your hardware supports in terms of reporting. If we go down further, uh, you get a ton of um, drive information. So for me, I've got a crazy amount of drives connected because this is a editing computer. In fact, not all of them are connected um, to, or to my system. But for example, if we go ahead and have a look at, let's say this particular WD hard drive, we can expand it and a bit of a drop down appears. We can get information such as activity. Obviously the computer's idling, so not really that much there. We get space used in real time. Again, if it's a large format hard drive, really not gonna be changing all that much, but if it's like a smaller uh, RAM, uh, RAM drive, caching drive or something like that, 
that. That's pretty cool there. Obviously, data reads and writes. Let's get something that's probably going to give us a little bit more information like my C drive. So we'll just expand that one there. And it gives me a bit of an idea of what's going on. We can see that the total bytes written to this SSD is 26.0 terabytes in the entire life. So we do get a fair bit of smart data. Again, this is relying on smart data. So if your drive isn't that smart, uh, it's not going to really come back too much. But again, reads and writes and stuff like that. But you guys can figure that out on your own. Does it work? Well, the answer is yes. So I'm just going to fire up. Let's just fire up Minecraft, for instance, and let me bring over some actual monitors on our computer. So if I fire this little window up here, so we've got Task Manager and MSI Afterburner. So we'll want to go ahead and keep an eye on some of these graphs versus what we're seeing here on the phone. I'll quickly hit play. This little window will disappear. Thank you very much. And um, we'll start to see CPU increase uh, down here as well as on our screen here. So we can see quickly pins up to 100 and right there. Boom. We're seeing it relatively close to real time. I'd say there's about a one to two second uh, kind of sort of difference between them. But obviously, if we just uh, pick this guy up right here, we'll also to be able to scroll down and see our GPU utilization pick up in just a moment as the world starts to render and those types of things. So I've gone ahead and just sort of moved around a little bit in the game. We can see some utilization here uh, in MSI Afterburner in terms of the GPU. We can see that also too reflected on the GPU core column. We get temperatures. Let's face it, it's a 1080 Ti and it's Minecraft, it's not really going to be taxing the system too much, but you get the idea of what's going on. We do get a utilization history, which is really, really nice. Again, we can see what the fan's doing. We can turn things up and down. We can see wattages. We can see VRAM usage, all that kind of stuff. Again, for my particular setup, the FPS counter isn't working correctly, but obviously if you spend a little bit more time playing around with it, and if you do really care, uh, you can set up a dedicated FPS counter that's on your phone sitting just below your screen, obviously network and all those kind of things. Back to the CPU, we can see all our, U our usages right here. Now this does combine your threads and hyper-threaded, so we've got uh, six cores, 12 threads, but we've only got uh, six boxes because obviously one core does two threads. So um, that's basically it. It's a really simple app, but is really, really powerful. Now we can tap over here to graphs and we can get utilization graphs, temperature graphs, fan RPM graphs, so it separates them. So you've got voltage, clocks, load, and all that kind of stuff. If we tap on load, we can then go ahead and select what graphs are being showed on this load. Looks like an absolute mess, but you can uh, whittle things down to whatever you need for your particular tasks, um, which is really, really nice to have. Now, there's one more thing you can do, which is create dashboards, and that gives you, gives you nice little kind of graphy dial doodaddy things. Personally, I'm not too uh, into that for this particular use case, um, and also too requires you to donate at least like a dollar seventy five, I think it is, or dollar something US. Um, so it does cost money to do that. Yes, it's only a dollar or something like that. But for me, um, I'm really much more interested in those graphs that we do get um, just in the CPU and GPU utilization. Again, the graphs are much nicer looking. They kind of give you a nice overview if you want to set them up, maybe even put the phone inside the PC case if you've got a window. But for me, um, the reason why I grabbed this app is simply for this level of detail. I absolutely love it. It means I can free up another screen on my particular setup as I don't have to have that basically full of monitoring stuff. So it's really nice to have this on the screen right here. And uh, also too, I thought I'd give you a bit of a look around and how I've actually gone ahead and set this up. So we're over here at my desk. I've got my, uh, well, used to be three identical monitors, but I've switched one out for a Wacom anyway. Um, so that's sort of another video, but I've gone ahead and set things up here so I can go ahead and just see my CPU. And um, simply if I just scroll a little bit, I can also see my GPU usage um, on this particular system, which is really nice. And that goes ahead and frees up an extra screen. So I used to have this one over here with at least half, if not three quarters of it, taken up with Task Manager, uh, Hardware Monitor, and also to um, MSI Afterburner, but that is now all nicely consolidated on here. Keeps a track, which is really, really handy, gives me all my information, and I can have all three screens to be doing kind of whatever I need to do for video production and that kind of stuff frees up a fair bit of space.
So there we go. It is a fairly straightforward and simple application. I absolutely love it. If you want to go ahead and throw the dev a couple bucks, go ahead and do that. Make your own little custom dashboards. But for me, I'm really looking at those super detailed kind of graphs and stat readouts. That really is something that grabbed my attention when I actually saw it and um, knew that I absolutely had to have it. Now, if you've got an older Android device, go ahead and root that thing and you can then do an if this, then that statement. So as soon as it receives power from when the PC turns on, screen turns on unlocks and goes into all that there's a lot you can actually do with it and heck you could even mount it inside your PC case for a really cool like inbuilt dashboard in fact we might have to do a cool custom project and maybe even uh, 3d print a little little holder for our phone so do stay tuned for something along those lines anyway guys I'll go ahead and leave the links all down in that description box if you want to go ahead and pick this up though there is one thing that I will note um, and that is if you want to monitor a lot of systems this is probably not going to be the solution for you sure if you've got your gaming PC and maybe like a server or something floating around your house or maybe you've just got a couple PCs around your house you want to monitor sure this is going to be fine however if you've got a fleet of computers or a fleet of servers or something like that this is probably not going to be the solution for you as there are better monitoring solutions for our kind of fleet operations and yes you can technically uh, forward this data out over the internet but it's really not something that this is actually designed for this is mainly for your like gaming rig or your office computer where you're kind of just sitting on the same network and it's a pretty straightforward type of setup so uh yeah, do keep that one in mind. But otherwise, guys, let me know down in that comment section if you go ahead and set this up or let me know if you've heard of this before because this is the first time I've heard of it, but I'm sure this kind of concept's been around for a while. I know there was like MSI did their little app thing quite some time ago, but um, this is definitely something grabbed my attention. So uh, let me know down below. Otherwise, thanks all for watching and I'll catch you all in the next one.